So I think how many are there? Nine. Yeah, so shall we start the session? We'll take a start, okay? Right, so today's one is uh, unit four function. Is it clear to you? Yes. Right. So, function. What is a function? A function is a reason why we communicate. Every time we speak or write, we do so for a reason. What we say has a purpose or function. Here are some examples of function. So function, when it comes to the function, that's the other aspect of the language. Grammar we talk about, lexis we talk about, uh, what is the grammar and lexis contribution uh, in the language teaching. Now, the third area is the function where we use language for the communication purposes. So if you see here, they have given you uh, different reasons. For that, we talk, we communicate. Like you see, apologizing. There, might, there will be a situation where you say sorry to someone in different ways, official way, sorry, one way, unofficial way, different way, but time to time we so we use some sort of language for that to express our apology. Likewise, greetings, clarifying, inviting, advising, agreeing, disagreeing, refusing, thanking, interrupting, expressing obligation, expressing preferences. And likewise, some more also might be there. So it's just an example for you that these are different reasons due to, due to which we are talking to each other, all right? So next one is we can describe language itself in terms of its grammar or its lexis. Uh, this we have already discussed. When we describe the language grammar-wise, like we check different things, grammatical point of view, uh, Lexis point of view, where different vocabulary is there, chunks are there, uh, relationship of the words with each other. So that's we discuss in that. Now, functions are a way of describing how we use language. Grammar and Lexis, they tell you about the words and the patterns plus they tell you about the structure and forms and how we put them together, how the words behave in a sentence. But in the end, when it comes to practical, then we use all those things. And that's called function of the language. When we describe the function of language, we focus on the use of language and its meaning. So in the function, we focus, our focus is on use of the language and its meaning for the people who are in the context where it is used context the situation where we are talking to somebody now here you can see they have given you a table there is a context context mean a situation a boy wants to go to the cinema with his friend tonight he says Let's go to the cinema tonight. Now, context, 
is that he wants to go to the cinema tonight. So you suggest something like, say, you, you say like this to your friends. And in a lot of occasion in our practical life, we suggest different things. Okay, let's have a cup of tea. Let's go for a walk. Okay, let's watch a movie. Okay, let's play a game. So different things are there. Function. Suggesting making a suggestion about going to the cinema. Now, if you see context, exponent, function. So, if you see what is exponent, it is the language we have used to express a particular function. So, we use that language. We make sentences. We say different dialogues to express the function of something what we want to say, our feelings, our thinking to the others. Is this clear? Context, exponent and function? All right. Likewise, they have given some more example over here also. You can go to that. So we will go down and see what they say here. The language we use to express a function is called an exponent. You can highlight that and keep in mind the language we use to express function is called an exponent as you saw that in the above example. The sentences in the middle column in the table above are example of exponent. In the third column, the functions are underlined. You can see from table that we use the ing form of a verb, like suggesting, asking, to name functions. The words after the function in the third column are not the function. They are the specific topic that the function referred to in these contexts. So, this is what is the explanation what they told you in the table. Right, so what you need to keep in mind over in out of it is the exponent and the function. And what's an exponent? It's the language we use to express different function. Now, the next paragraph, an exponent can express different function at the same time. Highlight that. Okay, and try to understand this. It all depends on the context it is used in. Now here they say an exponent. One exponent mean a dialogue, what we say, can express different function. It can be used for various function. Dialogue is one, but we can use it for different function, the same dialogue. How? It all depends on the context it is used. The situation where we are talking about something. So we will say some words. Those words meaning will be one way in one situation. But if the same words we use in another situation, it will have a different meaning than the first one. Now, don't be confused. We will go through an example. It will be clear to you. For example, think of exponent, I'm so tired. This could be an exponent of the function of describing feelings. But who is saying it? Now, when we say, I'm so tired, so it's my feeling, right? But it depends who is saying it. The person who is saying, who is that? Is an adult, is a child, is a sick person, is an athlete. So when all they say in different ways, it means different ways. Who is he or she saying it to? And to who they are talking? Where is he or she saying it? Situation is where. For example, what's the context in which it is being said? Imagine 
saying I'm so tired in the following different context. So now we will see when we say this exponent, I am so tired and context of the, the scenario where we are saying it, it's different, how the meanings are different of the same. Context is what a boy talking to his mother while he does his homework. A boy is talking to the mother and uh, doing the homework. Possible function would be what? Requesting to stop doing homework because the children tend to not so interested in doing the homework after the school. So they fix the time for that, but even that's a burden on them. You know, so they want to go and play in the evening. So when the boy talked to his mother like this, that I'm so tired, mean. I want to not continue with the uh, homework. But look in the other scenario, a patient talking to his doctor. When a patient says this to a doctor that I'm so tired, describing a physical state. So definitely, when I go to a doctor and I say, doc, I'm so tired. So what does it mean that I, free, I, I have less energy? There is some problem in my body, you know? So he may prescribe me some vitamins and some food and will prescribe some checkups for that, all right? So this use of I am so tired while I'm talking to the doctor is different than the one uh, which is the child is talking to the mother. Is this clear? Yes. That's what we say. One, what is it? Exponent can be used for different functions. So I hope this point is clear to you that how we use one exponent for different functions and if the meaning will be different in different situation depends who is talking to who in what kind of circumstances, all right? So all this change the scenario of what we seeing. Right, next. One exponent can express several different functions because its function depends on the context. This is what we discuss about. Now, come to the other side. We talk first, one exponent expressing different function in different situations. But one function can also be expressed through different exponents. Try to understand this now. It is other way around what we discussed before. Before we discussed, one function is there, two, three different uh, sorry, one exponent is there and there are two, three different functions we use, depends on the situation. The same exponent, the same dialogue, okay? Other side, one function, for one function, we may use different exponent. Now, what is that? Like to express one kind of feeling or thinking, we may use different dialogues also. Are you getting this point? So if you see, it is other way around. One exponent, different function. One function, different exponent. Can you visualize this? Chamatka? Yes. All right. So those who cannot visualize yet, it will be clear with the example coming ahead. Okay. Here are five different exponents of inviting someone to lunch. In what different situation would you use them? Now, if you see here, we want somebody to come and have lunch with us. So we can say lunch. Probably you are going to talk 
this way with whom who are very much familiar with you or especially your working colleagues so all of them they know that this is the time for lunch and you people go together for lunch then there you just have to say lunch and it is obviously clear that you are asking them that it's time for lunch let's go for lunch all right so only one word you use there one exponent lunch but it also means to come for the lunch inviting somebody uh coming for lunch you say this also if you see your colleague is busy with the work and still even not thinking whether going for the lunch then you ask coming for lunch all right to confirm whether they, she or he wants to go with the work or wants to take a break exponent first exponent second exponent purpose is same come for lunch with us all right now for example your colleague is busy and two three you people are waiting and you have a group or somebody you call that sometime you call it gang also so uh, then you call that okay that one she is not coming or he is not coming then you are asking okay come for lunch with us mean leave it come on but purpose is same which we ask in the first exponent next comes why don't you come for lunch with us all right same purpose would you like to come to lunch with us again the same exponent is different purpose is same we would be very pleased if you could join us for lunch same is there any difference function is one am i right Yes, sir. Yes. Function is one. Expressing our feeling of inviting somebody in thinking using different exponents. This is what they are talking to you. That they are like in the first one on the previous page we discussed. There is um, one exponent. will have different function in different situation that's we discuss first like the child say i i'm so tired or a patient say to the doctor that i'm so tired but when it come down here for one function we can use different exponent as well and now this exponent which we have used we categorize that you just see on the right side informal to formal like the first one which we say lunch it's very informal likewise the level of formality is going up coming for lunch come for lunch why don't you come for lunch and when it comes to the last one where we say we would be happy we would be very pleased if you come if you could join us for lunch is a very formal way of inviting so usually you write these on the invitation cards to the people formally inviting them all right so i hope this is clear and then we will have a little bit more discussion on it let's see yes sir. all right these exponent express different levels of formality these exponent which we discussed here above they express different levels of formality for example more or less relaxed ways of saying things relaxed ways mean you don't bother much whether you need to use some particular words so relaxed ways when you are with your friends with the family with the people around you who are familiar with you okay so you are in the relaxed mood you are talking generally speaking formal mean more socially distant what is formal when you have more social distance with a stranger usually okay with at a official occasions language is used in more official and important situation amongst people 
who do not know each other very well. So when we don't know the people, we are trying to be quite more polite, you know? And when we want to be in that way, so we use formal language for that, right? So like your friends very much, your uh, friends from the school and when you meet up with each other, so you, your social status might be different. But when you talk to each other in Singhala, you say Tamse Tamse to each other. But you don't call anyone stranger Tamse. They will start fighting back with you, you know. So that's what it is, what they are saying here. We use, we tend to use formal language mostly in a situation where the social distance is more between the people. And when the familiarity is more, we use, tend to use very informal language. Right. Informal, more socially casual. Language often occurs in relaxed situation amongst friends, people who know each other well or treat each other in a relaxed way. Right? This is for the informal language, opposite to the formal. Informal exponents are sometimes colloquial. Colloquial, what is it? For example, very casual, like the language which you use, slang language also we call that, okay? Very casual way of talking. Uh, very casual and conversational, such as he's off his head. He's off his head means he's crazy. What do we call that in single? Pissu. More also we say, right? Okay. There are also neutral exponents. Now, this thing we didn't discuss about. Neutral exponents, which are used when we want to show neither great respect nor too much casualness towards the person we are talking to. So, when a situation is there where you don't want to be very much formal, so when you are very formal to someone, it can go two ways. We will discuss in the next paragraph. But commonly, samane, when we formally talk to somebody, so we are paying respect to that person. When we are talking informally, so it also can be, go two ways. One is we know the people, we are with the family, friends, colleagues, we are very free and casual with each other. There it is used. You got? It? But there is one another way of the formality of the language, which is neutral. What's that? Neither so informal nor so very formal. In between that, it means you tend to not pay much respect to the person, nor you want to insult or to be disrespectful to someone. Then you use what? Neutral language. All right. So, Yeah, they fall between formal and informal. Why don't you come for lunch with us in the above exponent is an example of neutral exponent. If you can see that, the central one, okay? Right. So now we will go to, is this clear up to so, so far what we discussed? Is it clear? Yes, sir. All right. Any question, please, you ask me because uh, I would be happy to answer that if there is any confusion. Next paragraph. People usually choose to use the level of formality that suits the situation. Commonly we talk according the formal language level of formality which we use according to the situation. All right? And that's we sense, that's called sensibility. A person who doesn't have sense of talking, they don't know how to talk to somebody. So that person is not that much uh, respected among the people. Why? Because mostly say that she doesn't know how to talk to someone or he doesn't know. And the person who can understand the level of formality according to, to the situation, most probably they, they do well in the social life. Right. 
This is called appropriacy. So highlight this word when we use appropriate language according to the situation, we call it appropriacy, language appropriacy. So that's what we, when we comment on somebody's language, we say language appropriacy is not there. When we are evaluating somebody's performance in the office or we are evaluating somebody's performance professionally or somebody speaking uh, test like in the Cambridge exams, we take the speaking test. There we check appropriacy, appropriacy of the language, how they are using it. So appropriate term is the suitable term is what? Appropriate or appropriacy of the language or language is used appropriately. This you can use uh, when you are writing the comments on the students uh, writing or about their performance, okay? Language wise. A teacher greeting her class. Now they are giving you example how the language is used appropriately. For example, a teacher greeting her class could choose to say, I would like to wish you all a very good morning. Oh, hi, guys. Now you just see. Both exponent are explaining one function. Greetings. But a teacher comes to the class and she say, I would like to wish you all a very good morning. Children might be looking at her face. What happened to our teacher today? Right? Why? Because she's using very formal language. Children are not expecting that. And if she gets into the uh, gets inside the class and then she says, hi guys, that's also very inappropriate. Both of these are likely to be inappropriate. So what we say, the language is not used according to the situation that is called inappropriate language. These terms noted down because it's very useful when you give the uh, feedback on somebody's performance. So try to use proper term for that. So you can use about the language appropriacy. Language was used appropriately or inappropriate. And a very formal way we talk about the people, if, for example, if we say in the casual way, she's very rude. All right. So uh, this is kind of like neutral or maybe informal kind of. But when you say in the formal way, when you say your behavior was very inappropriate. That is very formal way you say that she was too rude to me. Okay. Right. So these, uh, these terms, because the teachers, they need to use very appropriate language. That's what is the difference between the teachers, the teachers, uh, our teachers of a language and the common people. You need to use appropriate language according to the situation and you need to have good vocabulary and terms to express your feelings. Right. So next is what? Where were we? Where were we? Mm -hmm. Right. Inappropriate means unsuitable in many classroom situations. The first, now they talk about the first when she said, I would like to wish you all a very good morning. First, because it is too formal for the second and for the second and the second, because it is too informal. All right. Too formal and too informal. So uh, you don't have to be because in that situation, you have to use a kind of normal like Usually they say, good morning, children. That's fine. All right. Everyone or something similar. Okay. Like here they have told you. For the teachers to say, good morning, everyone. Usually we say like that. Some say, good morning, children. Some say, good morning, student. Okay. That's appropriate. Or something similar like that. Of course, we sometimes use inappropriate language on purpose to create some effect. Now, this is that second thing which I was telling you when we want to be very formal to someone, uh, it, can, it can mean something different. Mean you don't like that person to talk to or you don't like this person to continue 
or you you are angry at that person so when you want to show you become very formal that's a very polite way of showing your anger how for example a shop assistant using great formality with a customer may be signaling that he would like the customer to leave language that reflects the situation in which it is used is often referred to as registering now have you ever been in a situation that a shop assistant is being very much polite to you but in a sarcastic way you can understand it but you can't say that he is impolite or she is impolite why because obviously he or she is using very formal language but sometimes we say it's not what you said but it's the way you said you know so she said like for example they tell you very politely madam this that and you know, so it means they they are they are sarcastically saying that you leave this thing please and go it happens uh you may observe that okay so these are the these are the kind of like you know in between the lines if you can sense the thing most people if they like we say it need common sense to understand these things but what to do chamatka common sense is not common that is also they say so usually <laughs> it depends <laughs> to whom you are talking and how they get it but in a very formal situation uh or a, a, a normal situation when you become very formal to someone so it is sarcastically they are doing something yes madam why not madam all right madam it mean they don't like you to continue whatever the business you are doing with them right so uh, next thing which uh, they tell you here language that reflects the situation in which it is used is often referred to as a register now underline this word if you remember in the function uh in the function they have given you uh, this uh one word register in the last and i told you that if you have done it wrong leave it because it will be discussed in the uh, next one not the function in the lexis i think lexis they have given right function we are doing now so what is register register is language that reflects the situation language mean appropriately when we have used a language according to the situation is called register so we say they have used a formal register or informal register mean the language is used formally they have used the language or informally so the language is register they they should use a formal register here what does it mean they should use a formal language okay an informal register is needed here so it means informal language is needed here is it clear the word register right hi is an example of informal register a very good morning to you is an example of formal register is it clear hello give me time yes sir yes all yes, right sir. okay thank you fine so now is there any question so far what we discussed any question so how many things we discussed so far exponents okay functions one exponent different function one function can be expressed to different exponents all right formality to informality appropriacy of the language inappropriacy and then coming to formal language neutral language and informal language then we come down to the register a few things we discuss only all right not much so we will go to the key concept key concept i told you we have to see there might be some 
important kind of things over here. Uh, not necessarily all the points which they give you are important, but certain can be suitable according to your teaching style. All right. So course book in the 1980s and 90s were often organized around function. Each new unit focus on a new function. For example, unit one expressing likes and dislikes. Unit two making suggestions. Unit three agreeing and disagreeing. This books, these books were based on the functional approach. Now you understand when we say functional approach. When the book is based on the functional approach, it means they tell us how to use the language. So before that, it is the books were mostly on the grammatical approach. These approaches we will discuss in the coming units. But grammatical approaches were, functional approaches were, communicative approaches were, lexis, lexical approach. All these approaches are the ways, different ways of teaching language. We will discuss that in the unit uh, most probably, I think, is unit 16 or 17. All right. So just keep in mind, functional approach, unit 15 they have given. Yes, we will discuss that over there. So uh, nowadays, most of the books are based on the way language is used. So it's easy for the student to contextualize and visualize their uh, language that how to use in a situation. Next point is a focus on function in the classroom can lead to an emphasis on communication and learning language in chunks. Do you remember chunks? Chamatka, what is a chunk? Why? A... Kind of a phrase, like words, words, chunks. Like... Yeah, but there is kind of phrases I know. Don't give me general answer. You know? Give me particular ones, specific ones. Why? Because Begin. I know you are very specific about the... Begin, special verbs, allocation. Mm. Allocation, special verbs. Exactly. Chunks or allocations, fixed, uh, uh, fixed expressions, and idioms. Yeah. All right. In our normal life, can you people tell me where we are using chunks? What's the importance of the chunks in our mother language? We discussed that also. Anybody remembers that? Oh, suddenly express or something. Mm -hmm. it's a, it has a very important role in learning our mother language. You people have forgotten that Niloja, Modita, the importance of chunk. Oh, somebody is saying something. Yeah, who is that? They are like phrases that we learn without uh, we used to speak in our day-to-day -day lives with our yeah. parents and exactly babies they learn their first language their mother language in chunks are you getting this point we yes. when we learn our mother language we our age is between one to two years old we are learning in chunks we don't learn grammatical terms and the lexes and the antonyms and the uh, synonyms and all these things we don't learn in the, the children are not learning that they directly learns in the form of chunks the elders they are speaking around them and these Children, they are picking up the language in chunks, like they will pick up a word, they will pick up a phrase, half a phrase, half a sentence, and that's how they repeat it. So if you see initial stage when the children are speaking, they speak, they use different terms with the different things. Sometimes they don't know, but they use it. And that's looking very, uh, you know, kind of interesting for all elders to listen to that, how they express their feelings about that. Why? Because children, they, don't, they are not matured enough to know the situation and say, so whatever they have learned, they try to use that in the situation around them. 
So sometimes it's very funny what they say. But that method of learning the language is learning in chunks. So that's why chunks has a very important role in learning language. This is what they are telling you here. A focus on function in the classroom can lead to an emphasis on communication and learning language in chunks. If we are fo uh, focus on function of the classroom, like function means you are doing practice for the use of language. So in there, you have to be putting emphasis on learning the chunks. Like a lot of chunks we learn to express ourselves. Okay, for example, goodbye. Hello, everyone. All these are chunks, we say. This is what we use. Okay. Happy birthday. All right. Uh, these kind of a lot of chunks we are using in our language. So that's why when you are practicing the communication, you have to emphasis will be going on the chunks, right? Next point is writing is sometimes taught through functions. For example, when learning to write letters of complaint, uh, learners can learn excellent for greeting, greeting, explaining your reason for writing, describing your complaint, asking for satisfaction, signing off. Now, if you see writing, uh, there might be people who are working in the offices and they are writing different mails. So they learn all those salutation, which is to be put into the beginning, in the end of the letter. Okay. Uh, should you have any question, please? please do contact me in the end they put looking forward to your favorable reply all these they, these are the they learn in the chunks these ones uh, the function sorry so in the writing also we use that different function and we learn in that way and we are putting in that sometimes they don't know very exactly whether they have to use these or not but they know that okay you have to put it in that way so in the writing also we learn the writing through functions and uh, these different like if you see greeting cards you are sending there are particular ways of writing it complain letter you are writing there are particular ways of putting it there complain how to put your complaint in that so particular words are there to be used okay next one is nowadays uh, we usually find function taught together with the structure they contain so that the learners do not become confused by meaning a wide, meeting a wide range of grammatical patterns together at the same time. Nowadays, method of teaching language is that we try to teach structure, mean the grammar side, along with the use, function. That's the method. And if you see the latest books in the grammar, so you will see the use of it is also mentioned. They will try to explain a structure and then with the structure, they will put the use of it, how it is used, all right? So that's what is the nowadays way of teaching language. We can see that this is in the extract from a map of course below in the third column, grammatical structure is given together with an exponent of function expressing likes, which are expressed through this structure. Now, if you see, Usually the content page, it is like this for the books. Like you see here, unit six, function expressing likes. Now in the grammar, what are the uh, areas in the grammar dealing with the, this? It will be first and third person present simple affirmative. Because when you express likes and dislikes, mostly you are using present simple. I like this, I don't like this, okay? So that is how they, relate the grammar with the function and in this way teaching is easy of the language student also understand if you teach uh, grammar in isolation means separately without telling the student how to use it they will not be able to make the link of that grammar with the practical use of the language in this right right next point is Combining function and grammar helps to give grammar meaning and context. 
reason behind it, why we combine grammar and function together, because it gives meaning to the grammar. Otherwise, grammar is a, they say it's a boring subject. Whenever you discuss grammar, it is boring when you are discussing the grammar rules and terms and the um, different, uh, what is it, uh, uh, things in the grammars, and you are not relating it with the practical life. If you relate it with the practical use in the social life, it becomes interesting, right? It also helps learners to learn function together with grammatical structure that they can then transfer to other contexts for use. All right. So that's it about the function. Have you got any question? No, sir. So it means you have understood very well or not understood, not at all. Out of this, which shall I take? 